my presentation about the more merry Drupal 8 migrations. Uh, this is my first time presenting at Drupal Gen. <laughs> Thank you. I hope I, I do it okay, but uh, I'm always open to feedback. Um, I am uh, Daniel Frasso, uh, freelance uh, full stack developer, current team lead at uh, the National Archives in The Hague. First question, who thinks Drupal migrations are fun? Show of hands? No, I see one, two, not surprising really. Um, for me, I, I, I always thought Drupal migrations or migrations in general are really boring, but as the team lead at National Archives, I, I actually had to do migrations, but I didn't really have a choice. But to my surprise, it was really uh, much, uh, a lot of fun. And the fun had two parts for me. It was the puzzle around setting up the migration, uh, the discovery about the Drupal API, and working with the API, but also le learning new things from the data set and uh, the tooling. Uh, I will talk about API discovery, uh, the migration API elements, uh, what Drupal core ships uh, for migration. Uh, I will also talk about uh, a migration uh, I did for the National Archives, uh, it's a Kahal Archive, and I will also talk a bit about uh, finding things in data. Um, the Drupal 8 API is all about declaration. First part is the migration YAML file, where you, where you configure all the different pieces, like uh, the, the source, the destination, the process, and the dependency. Uh, there are other metadata elements like ID and label, and uh, later on groups. The, the first important part is the, the source plugin. With the source plugin, you can define uh, where the data is is from. Uh, in this instance, this is a custom plugin called Node Story with uh, configurable items like track changes, node type, and uh, vid categories. The destination uh, definition is also a plugin, and this is a, a Drupal core destination plugin called Entity, uh, and the specific, specific entity for this destination is a node. And you can also configure the destination with the default bundle, in this case, a story. And the story is uh, a predefined content type I set up in my Drupal uh, site. Another part of the API is the, the process section. The process section is where you transform the data from the old to the new. For instance, we have uh, the, on the left hand side is the destina destination. And on the right hand side is the, is the source uh, field called title. But you can you, you cannot only uh, map uh, source to destination, you can also transform uh, the source to uh, destination. For instance, uh, I have an, a custom process plugin called Extract Elements, where uh, I get the body source and I remove uh, some elements with these classes here. I remove the date and the intro elements, uh, but I skip uh, the tags like image. If that all is done, it uh, puts the, the extracted data in the body value uh, field of the destination. You, you can also define the dependencies in a migration YAML file. Uh, for in this instance, I had the base uh, YAML file called story. And in that uh, 
migration in Nepal, I had these uh, dependencies. And these uh, four dependencies are basically other migration files. Uh, sometimes I get a comment that the, the Drupal 8 API is not, is not very well documented. Uh, it is a bit true. The base overview is documented and uh, there is a lot of uh, documentation on the Drupal website about the Migrate API. But you will learn more if you read the Migration Plugin classes in the comment section. And you will also learn a lot more if you check out the examples of Migrate Plus, uh, Migrate Example and Migrate Example Advance. And uh, furthermore, it's just like Technisch Lego, you have to experiment with the different uh, plugins uh, to get your desired results. Uh, let's talk about what Drupal core migrations already ships. Um, if you try to read the documentation, it's a lot. Uh, and it's sometimes uh, forced. Uh, but uh, I also uh, started to look at the existing ship examples for the Drupal 6 to Drupal 8 migrations. All these files all, all are shipped. Uh, and you can uh, see in these migration files how Drupal does its own migration from 6 to 8. It also has uh, Drupal 7 to 8 uh, migration files. I opened uh, this for example, where you can see uh, some extra metadata like Ovid. All that means uh, check if the IDs are not being overwritten. You have a different source plugin, Drupal 7 node, but the, the process is actually the same. You have also uh, source fields and destination fields. And these are the different dependencies. And here is the same plugin used, the entity node. But the document what the Drupal docs does not uh, uh, tell you is how many source plugins you have. To my surprise, we have about 140 plus source plugins already shipped in the Drupal Migration API. You can get, get a list of these definitions by running the above command, uh, get definitions of the Migrate Source Plugin Manager. An example is the Drupal 7 block custom source. You can migrate custom blocks from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. You can migrate the path out of patterns, language, uh, and also some other exotic uh, source plugins like embedded data. Uh, another uh, noteworthy source plugin is called, is called the URL source plugin. This is not from core per se, but it's from Migrate Plus uh, function module. With that uh, source plugin, you can retrieve data via URLs, URLs like uh, the JSON API my, uh, the previous uh, uh, speaker talked about. Uh, if you plug in uh, that uh, JSON API URL, you can fetch and parse the data. You can not only parse JSON data, it can also parse uh, XML data. You have also 100 plus process plugins. Uh, this is also surprising because uh, I started with building my own process plugins until I found this uh, definition list. Uh, you can, the, the Drupal uh, doc API also has a list of uh, available plugins and, and um, some uh, examples and how you can do it. But uh, the, the, the best documentation to find about these process plugins are in the classes itself, in the uh, class doc blocks. You have uh, uh, a process plugin like file copy, where you can copy one file to another destination. You have entity exist, uh, if, uh, check if an uh, entity already exists on the, on the destination database. Uh, another must have and must use plugin is the migration lookup uh, process plugin. If you have uh, multiple migration files which are dependent on each other, with the migration lookup you can find the, the, the reference entity with that plugin. You 
also have about 100 destination plugins. Most plugins, however, are based on the, the entity uh, destination types. Available are like the, the entity load, which uh, you saw in my example. We also have um, the, the table destination, where you have a, a, a raw table where you can inject uh, the data to. And of course, we have the, the, the Kumbig destination. Uh, another must-have for migration actually is the, the Migrate Plus. Uh, with the Migrate Plus you not only get uh, examples uh, as, as a module, but you get also extra pre-process functions and uh, something like Migrate Rollback. Uh, and with Migrate Tools you also get extra crush uh, commandos for your migrations, like Migrate Status where you can uh, see an overview. Like I said, uh, these are also must-have tools. Uh, you can uh, use Drush or Drupal Console for your migrations. Some people uh, choose uh, the Drupal Migrations UI for, for an overview, but if you have a lot of migrations, like we have the National Archive, where we usually migrate millions of records from old sources to our Drupal sites, those migrations sometimes tend to take weeks to finish, then uh, Drupal UI is not really viable. So we resort to usually resort to Drush. Um, let's talk about the uh, migration we did for the National Archives. We had this this old website, Gaatna, with the uh, Verhaal Archive. Lara knows it very well. We had to migrate this old site, the site is 10 years old by the way, to our new uh, website, National Archive. We had to, I had to prepare uh, a lot of things first. I had to set up the destination content type. Uh, it was a node type story. Uh, I had to gather the source data metrics about how many nodes I had to import, how many images were there, were there and what were the references. I also had to uh, check and gather source dependencies. Uh, there were not only uh, note, data notes, but also users who, who wrote these stories. Uh, there were comments beneath these stories, and they are also had static content in the form of images. First, I had to set up the source database in the settings.php, where you find the, the legacy database. You also use the database key, Gaatna, uh, in your migration group. The migration group is also a feature that's uh, added with uh, Migrate Plus. With migration groups, you can uh, group, uh, define groups and combine multiple uh, migration paths together. Uh, this is easier, uh, so you can only run a single migration and migrate plus will calculate the dependencies and uh, run the migrations in the correct order. Uh, you also have to set up uh, a custom module. Uh, for a National Archive I did it this way with bash script directory and the config install and some dependencies in the image uh, directory and of course a source directory for uh, custom plugins First we have the YAML files, this is an example for the, the story uh, migration in, in the migration group Gaatna. And each time I, had, I created or edited the, the YAML file, you need to import the updated YAML file with Drush config import partial and the source directory. This way you do not have to uh, uh, reinstall your module constantly. For, um, for this migration, I actually had to build my own uh, source plugin uh, with, uh, with an extra property. And the extra configuration property was the fit category. Fit category it was, a, was a fixed uh, 
term uh, term ID, uh, which I found in the in the in the source. The you if you really want to build your own uh, source source plugin, I recommend to check out the source plugin base from the Drupal API. Uh, the doc blocks there are very helpful and and show a lot about the configuration and the and how and what you need to do to get your source data out. This is this is the code uh, the code block for the custom uh, source plugin. We have the annotation migrate source with the ID you saw in the YAML file. Uh, and this is this basically extends the existing node source, node source class, and the only function here is the prepare row. And for each row, I had to uh, look up some extra properties for for the storage images, so I can add them in the YAML file. And that is basically what I do here: is row set source property, get storage image enrich, and the the linked image, and this. This property I can use in the YAML file. The next part was processing the process for transform the data. We are basically uh, field mapping here, uh, setting a default value, and the default value for the body format is basically HTML. But also our uh, another custom process plugin, which I did not find in the uh, Drupal API. Was the extract elements I wrote, where I uh, remove uh, these classes. This is an uh, this is the code block for the custom process plugin, the extract elements, with also an, another uh, annotation plugin, annotation migrate process plugin, and it extends the process plugin base from the Drupal core API, and. This is just a part of it, and it, it checks the uh, configuration values and basically loads the, the source data in HTML and does the processing on HTML, and also returns it with uh, the clean the clean sections. Uh, a big part of the migrate loss is the migration YAML dependencies. For the story migrations, these this is actually the dependency graph. Story, uh, the story is dependent on the story category. The story category are uh, multiple uh, taxonomy terms. We have uh, story media images, we have media entities, but they are dependent on files, but the file is dependent on the file body. And the file body was, for instance, uh, uh, extracted images from the source, because the source had uh, literal HTML image data to be extracted and set in a new in a in a new media entity. Uh, another big part of uh, setting up this migration is a bit of bash scripting, because if you're in a larger organization where you can you don't have access to all the servers, uh, and another person has to do the the setup, uh, you have to do some bash scripting. For instance static content preparations or the database creation preparations. If that is uh, that's done, we can start a mig a migration with first migrate import and in this case the group called Kana. For the story uh, migration it was relatively fast. It was uh, just two hours thankfully. But uh, at National Archives we are as you speak, still importing other data now in, in non-public uh, facing websites. Um, the CRBR migration is, is, is set to run for the next three weeks. So, and that's continuously for a Drupal site. The result is uh, this uh, note with uh, an image header and the content written by a person 
in, in, a, in a new version, in a new format. The, the nodes are also, uh, because we use the Drupal 8 API, the nodes are, were also automatically added to our Elasticsearch backend, search and index. It can be found via the search page. And we also set up uh, a few to display uh, all the available uh, categories of the imported data. Uh, a big part of migrations is, of course, testing the results. You can do it with brush migrate status if you have that, but also SQL queries, uh, Drupal views. We use a lot of uh, old and new Drupal views in, in our old website. But also, if you have a source file, a CSV source file, you can do a line count if each record is a separate line. Uh, something to remember is the Drupal 6 daylight saving time that is uh, a bit uh, complicated. It's not working basically, so you have to take into account uh, Drupal 6 uh, times. And also check if you have uh, the correct uh, time zones and convert them to UTC and store the user time zones separately if necessary. It's not always necessary. Other checks to do are character encodings. Uh, sometimes CSV files are NC encoded, so you have to convert them to ATF8. And also check all the entity references. Because uh, Drupal API does, does do a good job of logging all the messages, logging all the errors. But if, you, if a migration runs for weeks at a time, you don't always have the luxury to read all the If all else fails, you can do a brush migrate rollback, uh, which uh, does, does rollback the migrations. It's also migrate uh, plus uh, migrate tools uh, extra. But uh, for us, the basic strategy was doing a SQL dump before starting the migration, because we have so much data to import. Uh, and if you really need to start again, you have to really do a Drush SQL drop because migration will add uh, tables uh, that will track all the current migrations. If you do not do a SQL drop, the next migration run will use the old uh, tables. Um, another part is the, the content findings part uh, that's, that's after the migrations. Uh, when, when I finished the, the Verhaal Archive uh, migrations, I found uh, this story about Irene Chio and, and her mother and sisters. Irene Chio is a uh, visited earlier. She's from Indonesia. And she, had to, she had to migrate, uh, her mother had to migrate her family from Indonesia to the Netherlands of uh, the social disorder in, in, in Indonesia. I did not know that, but this is uh, another pearl I found in the Verhaal Archive story. Another pearl I found was uh, Mr. Van Hassel. That's this guy here with the, with the arrow. He was uh, a resistance fighter in the Second World War. He, he was captured in 1943 and was moved a lot uh, to different prisons in Holland and was placed in Oranje Hotel in Schepening. In Oranje Hotel, a lot of resistance fighters were tortured and killed, so he thought he would die there. But uh, he, he, he got to live and was uh, freed by the Allies. And he, he went on to become a doctor and become one of the oldest uh, doctors in the Netherlands. And this is also a story I found in data migrations. So to recap, what I enjoyed most was uh, the puzzle about uh, all the different pieces of the Drupal API migrations, but also the findings. In, in this case, it was the, the story I found about the personal stories about people. But sometimes it's, it's, it's data, uh, financial data, or, or uh, 
sensitive data, which is also tells a lot about uh, who we are and what we do. Thank you all. Any questions? So sort of set up? A sort of set up, yes. And what did you mean when Migrate uses old tables? Migrate uses old tables? If you don't do a, 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 an SQL dump and another thing. Okay. Uh, you mentioned it. Oh, that for the SQL drop. Uh, oh. uh, each time you do a Migrate import, uh, the migration API creates um, migration tables, which holds uh, source and destination IDs. For instance, uh, a node has uh, an old ID of 10, and it creates a new node in the in the new database with a new ID 20. This map this mapping is, is stored in the tables. Uh, if you so, but if you do uh, Drush uh, SQL import, it doesn't. Delete those old create those those created tables. So, and if you do a new migrate import, it uses the old, those old tables to redo the migration. So you get uh, content clashes actually, migration clashes, migration uh, clashes. Can you explain um, how does it look like? Yes, uh, how does it look like? Um, for instance, uh, you if there are migration loops, if you do a if there are references between a node and a user, sometimes uh, sometimes users uh, user con generate contents create nodes, uh, and with those references they will they will use the old references. So the created node will sometimes have uh, the incorrect user. So it means if uh, a node on the on the source. Changes from outer, outer or something, exactly. and, then, and then it fails. And then it fails, yes. But if the outer stays the same, then there is nothing to fail. Exactly. But it's always best to start clean uh, and, and do a migration in, with a clean slip. It happens. I hope I got it. Okay. checks, did I already create this node? Okay. Did I already create this user? Yeah. Uh, you also have an extra option for migrate import, uh, main, main update, where you can force migration uh, to rerun, uh, update the already created node. For instance, if you added a field or you changed the field okay. in the process uh, mm -hmm. section. How did the node life is unique? Uh, by a key or? Uh, Yes, in, in, uh, it, it tracks this by creating uh, a hash value of the, of the content, of the, of the processed content. And, and this, these values, the, the source and the destination, and the hash of the, the source content, 
you can find in those uh, dynamically created tables. And that's why uh, you need to crop those if you redo the migration. Thank you. Just a small addition to the drop table thing. Um, when you when you do drop ex, uh, SQL export, it also includes like the drop tables for the export that it does right in the beginning. So that's why is why the tables are being recreated, but those that are made by migration are not dropped because it doesn't have a drop table. Of course. Yes. Um, my question was about the fuel processes. Is it possible to add multiple fuel processing plugins on one field after each other? Yes, thank you, I forgot about that part. Uh, you can actually chain uh, process plugins after on one another in the YAML file. In the YAML file, we, in my examples, you saw each time uh, plugin, blah, 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 and it uh, did one thing. Uh, I had one field, I had to on, not only extract elements, I also had to trim the, the, the final value. Trim or, or other plugins, you can chain uh, one after another in the YAML file. And it can be a lot of uh, plugins chained together. Thank you. Uh, to continue on that, have you also used the sub process plugin? Because we're actually doing a migration right now, and I see uh, in your examples, I see the same example that I've encountered in our own migrations, which basically says you have the field slash some subfields. Um, this breaks down with multi-value fields because you can't do slash delta, um, but the sub-process plugin can actually take a field and let you run different chains uh, for different subfields. Okay. So that's also an interesting plugin to look at. Okay. Thank so you. Really a question, but uh, <laughs> thank you, I did not know, but thanks. Any other questions? Yes. Okay, in another kind of uh, migration, you might want to uh, do a uh, frequent update of the, the data that you're uh, getting in, like uh, every night or so. Um, in that case, you may want to uh, remove items, from, uh, important items, items that you migrated yeah. before. Uh, yeah. How do you deal with that? Is there some the support for that? Do you know what I mean or not? Yeah, I know what you mean, but I do not did not uh, have that use case yet. I do not know if, if Drupal API also deletes those. Uh, I don't think it deletes those. No, it is. Uh, it is a uh, custom. No, there is IR, like uh, uh, proposals for that. Yeah, OK. But, uh, no, it's, still, it's not uh, finished yet. It's still, like, still no. OK. I wondered if you had stuff. I can imagine, uh, just on the top of my head, you know, all the migrations are tracked with IDs. You, know? you can, for instance, um, uh, add an, another process plugin for the ID and track if the if the ID is all in the source. You can also do uh, event subscriber. You can also add event subscriber to migration and check. Check uh, after the migration is finished if if the if there are new data if the new data uh, contains the old uh, the old one and then delete it. That's probably my strategy. Oh really? Because the the Drupal API tracks all the added data. So with an event subscriber, you can query the, the track data and compare it with the, the old and the new situation where you can delete uh, a lot of things. Uh, we had that uh, <coughs> for uh, entity revisions, different nodes, wherein all the created revisions are in the wrong order because uh, the oldest revisions had, uh, had the highest ID, IDs, the node IDs. <coughs> And we had to reverse the order of the node IDs. We did it by. Uh, I have one question.